Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Tennis Manager. We're on episode 34. As we come up on another round of infrastructure upgrades, uh, just about complete here in the next two to three months. That's obviously one of our, you know, goals in, in the near future. And we've got over a million, so that shouldn't be a problem to get that next business center upgrade on the way, or at least presumably, as I think we're right about uh, around the mark of money that we're going to need. But while that is set to finish in three months, there's also something else that is set to finish in three months, something that I often forget about. It drives me nuts that I do forget about this. But right now, we have expiring contracts coming up in in less than three months. And even though we have 88%, I can't seem to offer a new contract right now. I could fire, but I can't offer a new contract. That's a little worrying. Ita, meanwhile, same problem. 100% success on the goals. So we've hit the objectives, but I can't seem to offer either of them a contract at the moment. I'm going to have to look into this. We'll we'll see what's up. Uh, is it a glitch? Am I missing? Did they move it to somewhere else? I thought it was right here next to where this fire button was. Uh, but it's it's been a while, uh, especially with that little bit of time that I took off, how busy I've been. It's been a little while. My memory isn't quite on it. And we haven't had to worry about signing anyone uh, since we brought Gallus in. We haven't had to worry about re-signing anyone since we let and Lowell go go so uh, a little worried about potentially losing two of our three stars i really don't want to lose cost and save at this point uh, especially with with how successful successful she's been now i understand that a new contract at this level is it's going to be a totally different deal i mean she's going our revenue share is going to be a lot less than what it is right now uh, she's not going to be a promising player anymore she is going to be somebody who is well, top 50 player in the world. So it's it's going to be a different matter with the new contract coming up. Uh, and that completely changes things from Kassan Seva being a fantastic uh, moneymaker for us and, you know, awesome to watch the developing talent, blah, blah, blah. But it, it does change things when, when we're taking a much smaller piece of the pie. But it doesn't change that she's that player that we've brought up from the youth ranks into the pro ranks and so on and so forth. Well, uh, I don't want to lose her. Uh, you know, I want to continue that project. So everything we have is definitely not about these three though. It's been about the Academy and about the growth, the infrastructure. And that is the main thing that we're here for. Athletes are going to come and go, but anyway, let's hope it's not a glitch. Let's hope I find it. Uh, let's go ahead and proceed for now. By the way, in comparison to the other academies, we are no longer last place. Uh, the Florida Tennis Academy, the French Riviera are the top two. But down at the bottom of the list, it's it's not us. We've passed up the Wallabies. Uh, we're both still on that two tennis ball average in terms of reputation, which really all that does is average out uh, your your various categories, the team itself at two and a half balls, uh, scouting at two, training at two, medical still at one. We have a lot of work to do in that department. Uh, business at two, and that one's certainly coming along. That's where we've made a lot of progress. And then, of course, talent zone. Uh, you can see we have five. We are uh, cream of the crop for talent, as in potential versus what we have right now. We reached the end of hard season number two. Ranking for Gallus has improved tremendously. She's gone up nearly 300 spots in the rankings now to 127 after picking up a very healthy, healthy uh, set of outcomes. Eight tournaments, 15 wins out of 22 matches uh, played in. It was actually a lower win rate than what she, she had in the last one, but it was higher level stuff. So it resulted in a lot more points overall. Uh, Ita, meanwhile, moves up as well. 32 spots, now up to 130. So you can see all three of them are really starting to come into whatever level it is that they belong in. Also, eight tournaments. And unlike her previous stretch, which, which was quite terrible, to be honest, 70% win rate here, it was good. Uh, tournament win for each of those two. Kassan Seva, meanwhile, five tournaments played. Also, one tournament victory for her. Her ranking also improving. 
from 60th up to 43rd now. Pay came out a little bit less than what she had in the previous, but better win rate, I'll take that. Gallus speed goes plus one. And Gus and Seva, uh, one percentage point away from getting that drop shot back to a level 10, which we had already trained. We keep seeing it drop down and then come back. This was a little bit of a uh, break week for her as I did not push her this week. Next up is a 280 level tournament. All three of them involved in 280 level tournaments. Ita at the same one as Kasan Seva. She goes out in the first round. Pretty tight contest on hers, but loses to the Belgian. As a result, Kasan Seva, meanwhile, she, she ends up with the 5 seed. She ends up with a first round buy. So by default, she's already into the round of 32. Gallus was also knocked out in the first round of her tournament, though it was not this tournament. Uh, so Kasan Seva, let's see how she does against Jovovic. Second time I've ever gone up against Jovovic, and the Serbian has beat us both times. I, I don't know what it is with some players out there, but some players really, really give us a hard time. Again, not aggressive on the serve, and yet we have six double faults. With only four aces, they had eight aces and no double faults. That's already one of the key differences right there. This was a quick match. There was only 85 points till they took the win. And we only had 17 winners. Meanwhile, we had 15 unforced errors. Almost a one-to-one -one ratio on that, which is quite sad. I mean, that's really bad. You would think we were up against one of the top 10 players in the world, which was not at all the case. Getting that drop shot back up to that next level speed meanwhile also going up to level 14 so we see some progress for constant Seva in this week uh, ironically I, I decided i was going to train her hard this week for the first time after, especially after losing early on to somebody she should have beaten comfortably and losing so badly so i decided it was going to be a hard week of training she didn't even make it halfway through the week without whining that she was tired and needed a rest even though she came in totally fresh on the week so i did back off on the training a little bit back to what we normally do uh, of course we do see some progress but kasan seva is mm, getting on my nerves she is so immature as a player i wish she would just put her head down and get on with the program and uh, it's not being a bit of an annoyance for us tough first couple of rounds here at this 900 level tournament in wuhan we're going to come in ever so slight favorites in this round of 64, both unseeded. And then if we do survive that, the buy takes us up against the four seed. Not going to be easy. Definitely don't suspect getting past the round of 32, but can we even get past the round of 64 after her recent suddenly just fall from grace where she suddenly decides she wants to be terrible again? Yep. Mental attitude so much of everything first time we've ever gone up against this one and we come out ay yay yay so close just a few points away from calling it a winner but she is the loser 49 total winners 44 unforced errors there you go there's that mental just total breakdown where the opponent was 35 4 and yet we still nearly beat her the last two skills below a 10 i pushed lob up to the next level immediately meanwhile volley coming up on level 12 we continue our recent string of larger tournaments for kasan seva this time somehow now ranked 40th she goes up against melcaro melcaro just at 96 it's a chance to get through azarnaka the belarusian in the next round 23rd rank or seed anyway you you have a slight chance to get past that. No way you're beating Osaka in the round of 32, but she's got a chance to at least get one win, if not two wins here. Let's see what she can do with this one. Uh, this would be worth a lot more in terms of finances and uh, ranking points. So hopefully she can get some sort of result. Whoa. I was close, but we do get through first win of the episode, surprisingly. 6-3, uh, 4-6, six, 6-4. Six, six, 52% on the, the points won. Even without being aggressive, she still had five double faults. 49 total winners, 20 unforced errors.
So, Azernaka, we'll see how we do against the now 27th ranked player. Oh, and we do squeeze it out. 7-5, 7-5, very close contest. 53% of points won. Again, the double fault's a bit of a problem, but 48 total winners, a little cleaner in the play with four, uh, 19 unforced errors. At least we were better than 2-1 to one on our wins. Actually, it was almost 3-1, to one, right? 3-1 to one on our... Uh, or at least two and a half to one. <sighs> could have been worse on that factor, but yeah, we'll we'll take that. Uh, could have been better. Could have been worse. It was enough. The round of thirty-two does see us up against Osaka, which I mean, come on, let's be real. No chance on this one. Uh, Beijing Open, thousand level tournament. This would be the kind of one to sit through and watch, but I, I'm not interested in seeing us getting our our butts kicked. To be honest with you, uh, let's just go ahead and simulate, and we'll see the results. Oh, holy crap. Okay. We found some form. 6-4-6-2. We knock off Osaka. 62% of points won. I mean, it was comfortable. What the heck happened? Osaka only had five winners and nine unforced errors. We only had eight unforced errors. She just played the match of her life because I called her out for... She's going to get her butt kicked. Is that what, what happened here? <laughs> Surely she'll lose to the next one and they'll be lower, much lower ranked. They'll be lower ranked than us, right? <laughs> they are. They are lower ranked than us. And you, you got to believe after knocking off the number one seed, the number one ranked Naomi Osaka, that, that Galcia is going to beat us comfortably, right? That's That's how that works. That's how that works. That's how I'm predicting. I called it. Did I call it? I called it. I. This is how these things go, right? You you play up to a higher standard against better competition. You take on some lower competition, and you play like garbage. Thirteen double faults, seventeen two for Garcia. There there's your difference. That thirty seven on forced errors. How do we still only slightly lose this one? I mean. We looked like we should have gotten our butts handed to us on this. What a run, though, to get that deep. 29,000. Nice nice result on that one. That's definitely worth some points, too. That's probably going to bump us up the rankings a bit. Uh, just very unexpected is that result. Definitely not taking the easy way out lately. Another 280-level tournament still in China. This time we are seeded 13th overall. Not, not bad on that front, and that gives us a little bit of an advantage because A, it put us straight into the round of 32 with a bye, and B, we go up against somebody that we could and should maybe come out on top of in this one, though the next round would be a challenge, but at least we can get that deep into the tournament. That would be uh, good for the point points haul. 6462, and yes, we do come out on top. Unforced Errors comes back down quite a bit, just 12 this time. Squeezing out another one, even though the next round I predicted to be difficult. 624663, despite 20 unforced errors, despite four double faults. I mean, we shouldn't be winning these. Not like this. I no wonder there was a forfeit in that last round. That was Paterova, and we barely squeezed that one out. That actually makes a lot more sense. Meanwhile, we now go up against the three seed, 15th ranked player. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. I think it's right around the top 25 that we can just about hang with now. Uh, Ann Lowell is who she knocked off to get here. Ann Lowell now ranked 41st. So we are kind of neck and neck with Ann, even though Kasan Seva is still, if I still had Ann Lowell, Ann could easily beat Kasan Seva. Not easily. But Cousin Seva is still a bit on the back foot compared to Anne Lowell in terms of actual quality. But we seem to be pulling results with Cousin Seva where Anne Lowell spends a lot of time losing ever since we uh, stopped managing her directly. Same player that knocked Anne out does knock us out, though, as we go down 3 6 0 6. That's, that's painful. Uh, 15 unforced errors wasn't a lot, but only 21 winners. Not easy. I have no idea what's going on with that contract situation. If you do have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I can get to that just before I record the next episode in order to see possibly what the outcome is here. 
uh, what the solution is because nothing's showing up, even if they aren't interested, like a Corey Goff, right? I would love to sign Corey Goff, who sits second in the next-gen finals rankings, by the way, with Kasatseva leading the way. Gallus and Ita both in that top eight. Scout is there, Ma'omari, the, the, Fritova. I mean, we've been looking at all of them, uh, with the exception of Lo, Lopatska. Lopatska being the only one we haven't really looked at uh, out of this entire group sitting in the top eight. So interesting that they're all there. Brent Meyer also in, in 10th Ayala. I mean, it, it's all, all young stars that we've been looking at. So we, we've certainly had our eye in the right direction in terms of young talent. However, anyway, I have no idea what's going on with that contract situation. Even with a Corey Goff, I could still try to enter negotiations. Goff just makes it very clear that she's not interested. If Kasanseva is no longer interested in re-signing or Ita in re-signing because they are now at such a level that they're too good for a young, up-and-coming, you know, second-from-bottom group, I should be able to find that out, right? It should point that out, that Kasanseva is just not interested in re-signing with us. So why there is nothing about contracts, I don't know. Uh, uh, let's hope it's just a glitch. There has been updates that have come out recently, but I'm not sure. May maybe it's hidden somewhere else. I've I've been trying to find it a lot off camera, looking around, trying to see something, understand something about why I cannot offer Ita or Kasanseva some sort of contract renewal. Why nothing is coming up. I have the option to fire them, but I have nothing else. And for the same matter, I can't offer anything to Gallus either, even though Gallus has two and a half years left on her contracts. She's not going anywhere anytime soon, but still, it's it's a little confusing. It's a little confusing. Uh, finances are good. We're now just the one to two months away from all that infrastructure stuff happening, but we're also approaching that end of the season. Here is what we have to look forward to at the end of the season, next-gen finals. Hopefully... We're looking forward to retaining our lot of players that we have. I'd like to add to it, not take away. I'd really like to hang on to all three of them and grow and develop and try to train them all up and so on and so forth. And then add to that and grow, not replace. I'm not looking to replace, but I may not have a choice. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. That does it for this one, though. I'm the Kathleen Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.